Hello and welcome to worship for Sunday the 22nd of May, the sixth Sunday in the season of Easter. I am the Reverend Terry Peterson, Minister of St. John's in Gurik. Our reader today is Graham Gardiner, and we are delighted to be worshiping with you today. I give thanks for you. Seeing you brings me joy, for together we share in God's grace. Seeing you brings hope, for together we share so many stories we can build on. We hold each other in our hearts, praying that you may know life in all its fullness. We hold each other in our hearts, praying that you may bear fruit for Christ's kingdom. May you overflow with love more and more as we seek God's face together. Let us pray. Glory be to you, O God, for you bring your work to fruition in your time. We praise you, Lord Jesus Christ, for you call all people to share in your good news in every place. We rejoice in you, Holy Spirit, for you give gifts seen and unseen in your wisdom. Wherever we find ourselves today and however we arrived at this moment, lead us through your love to your way. You call us to share your good news and to let you handle the rest. We confess that we are prone to distraction, comparing ourselves to others, wondering how to copy them or judging their methods. We admit that we allow this spirit of comparison to steal both our joy and our focus, and so come to believe we are not prepared enough to join in your kingdom work when we don't have everything those other places have. Forgive us for taking our eyes off you. Forgive us for our simultaneous jealousy and judgment. Forgive us for hesitating to follow you because we can't do it the way others do. Remind us again that it is your work in us, your love made known through us, your word spoken through our voices, and strengthen our weakness that we may serve you with joy. We ask in Christ's name. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Hallelujah, Christ is King. Hallelujah. Christ is risen, hallelujah, Christ is King. Risen now, exalted now, we'll sing, Christ is King. Risen now, exalted now, we'll sing. King. New life abounds as morning sounds. Death has lost its sting. Oh, Christ is King. New hope has come. The risen sun. Death has lost its sting. Oh, Christ is King. New life abounds.
The reading today is the opening of Paul's letter to the Philippians. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are in Philippi with the bishops and deacons, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to think this way about all of you because you hold me in your heart for all of you share in God's grace with me, both in my imprisonment and in the defence and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness how I long for all of you with the compassion of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you determine what is best, so that on the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ, for the glory and praise of God. I want you to know, beloved, that what has happened to me has actually helped to spread the gospel, so that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to everyone else that my imprisonment is for Christ. For most of the brothers and sisters have been made confident in the Lord by my imprisonment, dare to speak the word with greater boldness and without fear. Some proclaim Christ from envy and rivalry, but others from goodwill. These proclaim Christ out of love, knowing that I have been put here for the defence of the gospel. The others proclaim Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, but intending to increase my suffering in my imprisonment. What does it matter? Just this, that Christ is proclaimed in every way, whether out of false motives or true, and in that I rejoice. For the word of God in Scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. I wonder how often we look around our church and give thanks to God for each other. Do we call our fellow Christians to mind and feel joy when we think about each other? Sometimes it can feel like Christian community is hard work, being fully present ourselves, being real with each other can feel vulnerable. And add in doing so with people who have every personality quirk you can imagine, and it quickly becomes tricky. It's easier to stay around the edges and not get involved because the relationships require energy we may not always feel we have to give. And yet, here is Paul telling a Christian community that they bring him joy, that he is grateful every time he thinks about them. Now, that can't possibly be true, right? Every single time, every thought brings joy and gratitude? Really? I'm pretty sure I'm the only one lucky enough to have a church where every thought inspires joy. The rest of the letter implies there might have been a few moments along the way when his thoughts have been less happy. But still, what if we tried it out? What if every day we thought of someone else in the church and thanked God for them? Even the people who might sometimes try our patience. Perhaps take a moment just now and Look around your mental image of the church family. When your attention is pulled to one person, just close your eyes and thank God for them. Offer up a wee prayer for that person. Even if you're not sure of their name, just hold their face in your mind and be grateful for them for a moment.
Imagine how different our experience of the world could be if we spent more time giving thanks for one another. If we spent time praying for each other to overflow with love more and more. If we spent less time wondering about people's motives and more time looking for how Christ can be made known, even in ways we wouldn't personally have preferred. If we were intent on participating in the good work that God has started in us and let God be also at work in other people in other ways. Imagine. Several months ago, I was at a Presbytery planning committee meeting, and as we were trying to prepare for the very hard work ahead, working toward a new way of doing God's mission in our Presbytery and across the nation, discerning where we need church buildings and ministers, and where we need new forms of Christian witness and community. I asked my fellow committee members, is there any chance that everyone will just behave like Christians throughout this process? I took it as a bad sign when the rest of the committee laughed. Nonetheless, I have decided to pray every day that all our churches may overflow with love more and more. And I invite you to join me in that prayer, the prayer that Paul prayed for the church, for ourselves, for the other churches in our presbytery, for the whole body of Christ in Scotland and around the world. That as we face some big challenges and changes in the world and in the church, as we try to bring the good news of Jesus Christ into a culture that finds church irrelevant at best and harmful at worst, that our love might overflow more and more. Now the thing about overflowing is that it's messy. Most of the time we try to contain things, not let them overflow. When a river overflows its banks, damage occurs. When the sink or the bath overflows, there's a lot to clean up. When we pour too much into the teacup or the pint glass, we waste something delicious, drip everywhere we go, and everything gets sticky. Overflowing makes a mess. That's why people didn't want to allow the possibility of resurrection, too. When life overflows the tomb, it makes a mess of everything we thought we understood. It messes up the boundaries and the rules that we use to confine ourselves and others. And it costs a lot. It demands we live differently in light of resurrection power. But Paul prays that our love would overflow more and more. I hope we will all be praying for love that overflows more and more, not just through the process of presbytery planning, but as we discern how to participate in the work that God started among us, right here in our own community. What is the mission God is doing here? And how is God doing it and calling us to do it? The promise is that the work will be completed in good time, but that will mean we need to join in with the Spirit's help to do the task. And figuring out what God is doing and then joining in can sometimes feel daunting. But Paul says that's what happens when our love overflows more and more. It isn't just that we feel nice warm fuzzies for other people. He prays that love may overflow more and more with knowledge and insight to know what is best to do. Not what is best to think or best to talk about or even best to pray what is best to do to produce fruit for God's kingdom? When we love more, we will also know more, and that knowledge will lead us to more love, or else it isn't true spiritual knowledge. When we love more, we will understand more, and that understanding will be about how to love more. When we love more, we will recognize what is ours to do 
And what we will do is love more. When we love more, God's mission will become clearer and clearer. And that mission is to bring everyone into the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. So you can see on the one hand, overflowing is messy. But on the other hand, it leads to hope, peace, justice, grace, overflowing love makes the world more beautiful even if it is a bit of a mess along the way. Now I know we like things to be orderly because we are Presbyterians, but sometimes we cannot plan our way out of the mess. The only way is through with love. If we try to get through without love, all we get in the end is sarcastic laughter at the thought of Christians behaving like Christ. But with love overflowing more and more, with study that leads to more love for God and more love for our neighbor, with insight into how God's love reaches out to us and through us to others, we may just find ourselves producing a harvest for God's kingdom. May you overflow with love more and more. Amen.
You may know that St. John's has a team of people doing a month-long sponsored walk for Christian Aid. We are right on target for getting all our steps in, but we are a bit behind on fundraising. We walk for people around the world in all sorts of need, people who have to walk long distances for water, for health care, for education, people suffering from effects of climate change and from man-made disasters of war and corruption and the long consequences of colonial mismanagement, people who need a helping hand. If you can sponsor our steps, you'll be directly helping people who need our prayers and more than prayer, our action. Will you let love overflow more and more in the form of some support for people in need? Please visit our Walkers fundraising pages, which are linked below, or contact us to find out how to give offline. If you're on social media, will you please consider sharing our fundraising appeals so that others have a chance to sponsor us as well? And if you'd like to join in the walking, we have group walks once or twice a week, so please check the church Facebook page, which is public. You don't even have to have a Facebook account to see it. And we post this week's schedule there. Thank you so much for your generosity and support of people who really need us. Let us pray. With grateful hearts we come, loving God, offering you our joy for those who have shared this life with us, for all those who have shown us love and grace, for all those who have taught us the way of justice and peace, for all those who have surrounded us with their prayers and their hope. We remember with joy the great cloud of witnesses whose stories are intertwined with ours, and we lift them to you in memory, in prayer, in gratitude. With longing hearts we come, loving God, offering you our compassion for those who are struggling in these days, for those who do not experience love, for those whose daily lives are marked by pain in body, mind, or spirit, for those who cannot rest as war rages around them. We remember with sorrow those whose stories are not deemed newsworthy. We must simply wait through each day without hope. We lift these all to you for your justice, your courage, your healing. With confident hearts we come, loving God, offering you ourselves for the work of your kingdom right in front of us, for the good news our own literal neighbors need to hear for the changes that could make the world better here in our town. We remember with a mix of trepidation and trust that you need us just where we are, and we lift our eyes to you, that you may reveal your gifts and your calling to us today. We especially pray today for the work of the General Assembly in the coming week. May all the elders and ministers and staff have minds open to discern your spirit moving in their midst, hands open to join in the work of your kingdom, hearts open 
to let love overflow more and more. Keep us close in your loving connection with you and all your people, indeed with all creation, and continue your good work until the world recognizes your kingdom on earth as in heaven. We pray boldly in the name of Christ as he taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us the wrong we have done as we forgive those who have wronged us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Friends, may your love overflow more and more. May the knowledge of God, the work of Christ, and the insight of the Holy Spirit bring the kingdom to fruition in you here and now. And as you go into your week, may the Spirit of God go above you to watch over you. May the Spirit of God go beside you to be your companion. May the Spirit of God go before you to show you the way and behind you to push you into places you might not go alone. And may the Spirit of God go within you to remind you that you are loved more deeply than you can possibly imagine. May the fire of God's love burn brightly in you and through you, into the world. Go in peace. Amen. Mm -hmm.